Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm, I've got the mirror again. I'm able to speak to you like this without moving the camera. I'm quite pleased with this idea, but um, I'll sort of, uh, I'll be working on, thank you for, thank you for joining me, by the way. Um, I'll be working on uh, more of this um, painting of two figures uh, this morning. And um, really, I think it's, um, it's got to be the last one um, because the faces tend to take me so long um, that it it tends to be I'll be I'll be doing them for sort of um, sometimes sort of eight hours on the trot and sort of coming back to them here and there. So any any more great any more detail, I think it's um, it's best to decide that this will be the last one for this picture and then for next week or the next one um, start a new picture and show you show you the finished version of this when it when it happens but it's sort of the the last few little details um, I'm not always sure exactly how it comes about um, and sometimes I have to sort of just fiddle about with it until, until I like it but um, we'll um, get I've it might happen today that I I finish it and in in the hour, but um, I'm I'm not really sure about that. Right, so, but th tuning in, um, yes, yeah, so we've got uh, got it on a flat surface again um, because I wanted to be able to sort of concentrate on the faces, and it's it's a little bit more difficult standing up. Um, doing these very fine details, but wanting to make it look good in the camera too. It's um, uh, difficult to be leaning on, leaning on the canvas. So I'm going to start off with, um, I think, just having a look at it. Um, I'm, I think a little bit more white actually. Too, uh, I'm, I'm getting a bit sick of these these areas um, on the on the sides it's a lovely day isn't it right um, the, yeah, I would like yeah, and we've got the sunlight pouring in but it's not quite ticked around to here so I've got a light light trained on the picture so I hope it's um, hope it's nice and visible and I hope you can hear me as usual um, It's kind of uh, these these construction lines. They're a kind of nice uh, option to have um, as you go along with the picture. But uh, I think getting rid of these will bring the figures out. Um, I'm kind of using a, using oils. Um, if you've not been watching this before, uh, kind of a, a mixture of a solvent with um with paint already dissolved in it it's uh, at this stage it's stage of the picture there's more to lose um in terms of what i can what i can spoil with uh, the faces and the figures that have already been drawn and there's a number of you can Try and capture on the faces if you can go after them. Um, but the reference, um, this was the reference again. Um, this figure, I, I think the the feeling of a sort of laugh happening is is quite a nice thing to to go for. And although it it, it looks quite different now on this, it it could change quite drastically, really. Um, so I may, um, I may sort of really have to stop talking when I'm 
when I'm doing the face in a moment um, because it will I'll sort of describe what I can quite it's quite nice to sort of speak your thoughts but sometimes it gets to the point where I'm needing to check so much this is this is kind of doing this background has been sort of easing my way into doing into the idea of doing this getting going on this face because I, I do get quite I get nervous about whether I'll actually be able to do it and it's by no means um, all set out exactly what's going to happen I'd like to move this camera sorry about the shake um, I'd like to get that closer in for you I'll try not to dip my phone in the paint. Oops. Right, it's a little bit closer. And so I can still actually see. Um, right. Now then I think in with the in with the rigger brush again. I've got two solvents, two solvent pots. I usually tend to have a couple of pots on the side one of a sort of diluted white and uh, as w as well as a cleaning solvent but mind you I've been keeping my brushes really in okay they they stay dirty I sort of re re wet them every every day or so if I've if I've not been painting but I'm I'm painting every day when I'm painting every day it's um it's just silly to keep washing them every single day because it does take a while and it's a bit of a waste of solvent each time so I, I feel um, it might not be the best way to take care of your brushes and I'm sure Rosemary um, Rosemary and Simi would have something to say um, about brush care but um, their brushes are very, very good I like to use them um, now I've got to keep a really good watch of this reference um, for for my next move. The last time I was working slightly more from the mirror, if I remember rightly, and I might just flit over to the mirror again. Um, really, it's about thinking in what chunks I can see. And some of these bits I put on last week, I'm going to be covering up or sort of partially covering up. Um, and that is, that's really the name of the name of the game as far as I'm concerned. It's you keep adding chunks on top and then removing bits and it, and it's uh, an organic. So you create something that looks, looks like it's had a, had a life. Got the option of the cotton bud. Mm. Well, all these shapes can be smoothed into what's already there, and you you can. Something that will hopefully look like it's grown out of the paper almost or out of the board. It's an MDF board primed with primed with acrylic. It's really getting it to a shape that I had laid on top of there. I don't think it's a problem. Just 
it on top of the wet paint. Um, which I'm getting it to a shape that I quite like the it's it's a strange sort of judgment process. It's whether it's whether I, I like the elegance of it. I can't always put my finger on why I like it. It's just it's a it's a sort of feeling following my gut feeling while I'm doing it or following the the next mark I put down one mark will be the lead into the next few and then look then standing back from it and thinking what feeling do I get now seeing the whole thing and it's a an emotional reaction in that way and then then I can kind of tweak it and control it if I do remember to if I'm careful and I make sure that I am monitoring it closely I like the way he's looking now. It's um, a bit more, it's got a bit more personality. I think he was building up. I put those red lips on. And he looked. At, it just looked a little bit cartoonish, I suppose. And this is this is a surprise, as far as I'm concerned. I. I kind of do these do these pictures based on based on the reference based on that drawing that I did um last year and it's um by the way if you haven't seen it before it's a drawing from the from the uh, Potter Blues micro pub in Beeston uh, two figures seated and I've kind of photocopied or Print it, scanned in and printed out this version of it so I can just um, draw lines on it and do whatever I need to do with it to transfer transfer a nice convenient copy keeping the keeping the sketch the original sketch in the in the nice pristine sketchbook so that can maybe one day be so that can one day possibly be put in a frame. Reminding me now of a painting I've seen. I think it's an old that uh, one of um, I think it might be William Shakespeare. Oh no, it's um, Richard Burbage. A picture of Richard Burbage from I think the sixteenth century. Uh, now I've got what I've got in my palette. I'll just show you the palette. Bring that into the shot. Um, this is a <laughs> very crusty palette. Um, looks like you're flying over a mountain range or something, doesn't it? Um, this has got the yeah. There's the wet paint in there. Most of it's dry. A big lump of white uh, and the three primary colours and uh, a brown, which I I find quite useful. Um, to add in part to blue and to make a to make a dark a black equivalent if you if you sort of use um black straight from the tube it it can have quite a harsh um contrast to the other colors and it's it's sort of a gentler um a gentler dark 
to mix a kind of brown, or bluey brown. And uh, the, although these colours might look like black, they are they are very dark blue. Um, straight from the tube, black has a kind of. Um, it can flatten the picture, so it's um, you. C uh, I've used it before, but it's worth it's worth bearing that in mind that it can do that. Uh, now, just uh, having a look, I'm going to mix a little bit of reddish brown. And it would be nice to get some sort of just going on his clothes, but something to draw the eye up to the face. It's a bit too, a bit too harsh. I've just plumbed a little bit of tiny bit of blue in to uh, deaden it down. It's a very pleasant thing to be doing on a morning like this. Painting. And really, if you if you're trying to think of things to things to do, um, if you have a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, you can anywhere you want to sit around the house or in the garden. Um, it's a case of seeing what seeing what is in front of you and uh, just trying trying a drawing if you've not drawn before um or if you've drawn before sort of getting yourself into the habit of doing it because the more you do the the better you get at making decisions about um, what type of marks you're putting down and as far as i'm concerned it's all about different types of marks to communicate the different materials that are going on in in uh, reality so you could just sit down and not worry about having to produce this perfect pic picture don't worry it may be even about producing any kind of picture at all just a load of marks to represent what you can see and maybe pick a few leaves from bushes um, and make marks with Whatever you're using, pencil, some some paints, or you dip your dip your finger in a cup of coffee and sort of try and if it's black coffee, um, try and sort of draw around with that using whatever tools you can improvise to get um, get something like a representation of a of a leaf so sort of this this kind of thing like sort of little texture tests where you you do a few you probably heard that described as cross hatching um that kind of thing and then uh something to contrast with that um let's smudge a bit of uh pencil next to that now immediately that is quite a contrast to that um that's a bush far away that's a bush close up um, or something close up um, and then you you can have if you're sort of doing outlines things with lines um, if you do drawing just sort of let the pencil f fiddle around but then you can sort of look and decide exactly what you're going to draw and uh, if you've got a leaf in front of you, look at shapes, uh, possibly between the leaves, or between the um, parts of the leaf. And I'm just sort of improvising this from memory, so it's not going to be very interesting. But it's kind of just sort of thinking, what, what have we got in a leaf that might make it interesting? You can sort of analyse it, split it up into in your in your eye into shapes like that. Just as experiments, because it this is what drawing is. It's making marks and trying to represent what you can see. And it's a and it's you're always you're always drawing. I think even when you're painting.
or sculpting, or you, you should be anyway, and drawing can be described, drawings only come to mean pencil and paper in the last um, last few years really. But it should be um, the process that you're, the process of observation and mark making to represent your, the reality that presents itself to you. Now he has changed. I, I think he's changed dramatically from what he what he was. He's a, he's a different person, um, and it's it's very nice to see these things. These characters uh, they they become people in spite of me. And if I can follow what is appropriate for them, uh, he is sitting there, and he he has he's kind of I'll move him up a bit like that. He's sort of rooted down. Now these these marks maybe won't necessarily need to be any defined in any greater way because of the contrast between the great detail of the face and this. Um, that contrast is it equals visual interest, and I think I think that just just something like that a rubbed area and a quite a sharp area if you look around what you can see in front of your eyes now um, there'll be there'll be the phone or the computer and then the, the possibly the wooden tabletop then a sort of a hard metal lamp all these things have a different mark attached to them explaining how the light is falling uh, or is being reflected away from it back at your eye and if and if you can come up with different marks to explain that you're in you're in control of what is going in your your little snapshot of your own reality which is your your picture your painting or whatever you're doing And I think that's why it's um, it's been described as a process of painting. It's been described as relaxing. I I think it's quite an intense process, but it's um, it's very um, I'm not sure if st stoic is the right word. It's um, still calming in in the sense that it uh, is like meditation but it's um really quite it requires a great deal of concentration and it's physically exhausting and it can't just be i, I don't think it can just be switched on you have to actually feel like doing it i i certainly have to build myself up to it warm up just like physical exercise <laughs> But it's uh, it's physical within that within your your mind. And that background's getting a bit a bit too textured, really. In comparison with the rest of that, um, I want his face to be the textured area. Um, so those some of those marks can just be smoothed down like that it really is a process of continuing to look and ever more ever more closely especially with a very small picture like this it's, uh, I can pick out a few of these marks with the pencil and get a finer I want this face as is usual with a with a when there's a face or a figure in the picture the face is the the most interesting thing that a person another person will be seeing in the picture and that can give everything more emotion so i like to concentrate on i like to make the face the 
the main the main draw with the most with the maximum amount of detail and then everything else subordinate to that it is the greatest detail in the face and then chunkier marks all around it and really it's trusting each time that after after I've worked on on this on a certain area with a certain amount of marks that it will look the most look like the most worked on area and it, it can't really fail to if you've if you've done that much work work in terms of just applying finer and finer marks Just have a little break from this fella and move on to move over to the other the other figure. Get them both in the shop there, but yes, this figure is a uh, much more it's a bit chunkier. He's actually got to have a relationship with that figure though. Um it can't just be maybe maybe that that figure is kind of reacting in the way he is because of this figure's non-expression. Um, now I quite I like that, um, so I'm going to do a, I'll do a bit of the background again around it and um, move the camera slightly up again. Get to see the paint area. I'll just uh, swizzle, swizzle you around, show, the, show you the paint area. Yes, there's the painting. Uh, a little tray of paints. I can sort of move it. I'm used to doing a lot of live live art shows. Oops, Daisy. Um, so the my equipment is sort of designed to be more portable. Oops, they keep getting a little. Please rotate your camera. Warning. Oops, today. There we go. Once again. The phone thinks I'm. I keep rotating it. Actually. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Ooh. Right. That's uh I'm just gonna take the take the phone off and uh, get it to set it set it properly. It's getting a getting uh, a bit confused this phone. Sorry about this. It's because I it's because I moved it. I'm not not quite as it's not quite as used to being in this position. Just it won't. It just doesn't like being in that position. I'm sorry about this. flat and move this about that's what I should have done you see um, right I think we're stable again that's the 
technologic technological equivalent of the an easel falling down. I just want a bit of bit of background on this. I've got the chunkier chunkier brush. I can't remember the names of these. A long flat. Um, it's looking a bit bright though, so I'll have a bit of this diluted solvent with it. It's just got a bit of I think it's the sienna sienna ish brown in sus suspended in it. Really it's the it's my dirty solvent and um where I've where I've washed brushes before but each picture tends to sort of as far as the colours go, they they melt into the next, and the next picture I do will probably will have similar colours. Uh, but you, you do need to watch that for it's all it's all very well, but you need to just make sure your your colours aren't becoming all dirty and basically the same. If you're using the same colour each time. Um, It can it, it, you're mixing it in that a similar well a, a darker color gets mixed in with the the last color and that something that you didn't intend and it then becomes a little bit samey color wise. No, not sure about that. Don't really not sure about that. What does that say? Yes, that's what I was talking about. A little bit of blue in my brush but I can it's only a tiny bit I can let that oh I quite like that that blue um, just a bit of it a little bit of vague vague light blue to contrast with I mean the complementary you, you've got a kind of it's very basically thinking it brown and well orange and blue complementary colors and you got very pale blue, almost an orange there, so you can you can think that they will work together. And this back this background isn't just uh, filling in space; it's um, creating an environment for these these people to inhabit. I'm not going to dare to move the phone again. I'm going to uh, keep shifting this board, which was my in plan initially um, so I need to stick to my plans it's just the phone doesn't like to be rotated uh, this all this background is it, it has a has a weight to it or a, a mass and you can think of you can start to think of the background as a as having as as being the atmosphere between the people, and if you can make it applicable to that thought for the viewer, the viewer might just look at it and think, oh, "Well, that's oh, the background's a bit of a a lot a sort of blobby background, I suppose it's misty or something, or there's a lot of smoke in there." But then you can think out of the physical, and you can. I think anthropomorphize is the word to uh, anthropomorphize the uh, the environment and give it give it human qualities and then you're into why why is this background the way it is and what are these figures actually what are they doing in it why are they staying in it and do they know each other and when you when you hear it described as when you hear pictures described as having a narrative, that's the kind of the kind of thing that can be meant. It's not a it's not a story, it's not a storyboard um, to explain to illustrate in detail what's going on. It, it's a kind of applicable image that anyone can come along to and. Um, inject with their own 
idea or their own experiences. That's why it's a bit. That's I think that's the difference between illustration and fine art. Illustration can be well the the limits of it. With illustration, it's more likely to be that everything gets explained. Because that's what the you're trying to illustrate the actual it's um the the um the situation but if you've got if you've got an image where you can use elements of that we can use the principles of illustration like good or well, accurate drawing and then th and that can be used in that can be used to help explain the positions that these these figures take or the environment that they're in but it doesn't necessarily give you a map of exactly how they got there and why they got there and you can you can blend these ideas and think think in terms of a an image being like a like a story and you can get stories that are more like a a dream really like Jorge Luis Borges I'd like to read the Argentinian writer they're they're more like his short stories and parables are more like dreams, really, and very visual. And I think this is this is I uh, it this what I had hoped is would happen with this picture is sort of happening i'm i'm surprised at how i'm able to actually at what i'm able to do in a short in a short time um and i, I really think I, i've been looking at, i've been dwelling on these lines Ooh, sorry for that wobble um, i've been dwelling on these lines for too long these construction lines and thinking well um, you might want them keep them but it's a good it's a good way to do it there's a there's a phrasing I've heard in carpentry, or carpenter, um, he said, "Keep everything as long as possible for as long as possible." And you keep your options open, and also that implies, well, with the painting, you don't need to do a blanket job everywhere for every move you make. So if I was to feel that this this texture for the background, or how I'm doing the background now, this particular mixture of colour, if I had felt that, oh well, you, you do pictures with one layer and then the next and then the next. And it's the same for every element. Then as as far as I'm concerned, that is going to produce the same type of mark all the way over. And explain to the viewer that everything is made of the same material. I like the idea of some of these, some of these marks, some of these lines rather, um, remaining. They, they kind of look like parts of the building um, or a building oh, excuse me um. shift this over here and 
And I like the add. I think I might just add a little bit of dark. Make it just a slightly darker wash with not not anything particularly strong. Let's start off with whoops today, sorry, another wobble. I'm getting a bit excited now by it. It's uh, in the finishing stages. If we can have a kind of dark side of this picture where the so the, the focus is coming on the two figures in the lighted part of the area. This is this is something that hadn't actually occurred to me to do. That I can have a kind of column in the centre of of a brighter area, which again adds to adds a story to it. Why are they? Where are they? Why are they here? And it, it it's it was drawn in a in a pub, um, but it's not necessary that you have to stay in the pub. You can give it that title, but that is the kind of that's the starting point for the reference. And uh, I mean, when you're in a pub, you can imagine all sorts of worlds. If certainly if you're reading or if you're if you're drawing, um, possibly a bit better to be in a in a cafe having a coffee. Um, excuse me, I've never slept there. Um, the coffee tends to focus the mind a little bit. The um, alcohol does tend to relax you, and uh, it's not. I wouldn't really recommend it for doing drawing or painting. This is really nice. I don't know if it's on, I think it's on BBC iPlayer. It was an in interview from the 60s with Francis Bacon talking about, the, the interviewer asked him, because he had a reputation for drinking, the interviewer asked him about, well, do you, you tend to drink and paint? And he said, well, yes, it's all very well. I have I have been drunk for two weeks uh, for particular pictures, but it does tend to make you rather... Uh, <laughs> I think it, his word was lazy. You, you accept... Um, you accept... A low, your, your standards get lower. And I've certainly found that when you... You you have a bit to, you have a bit to drink and you think oh yeah I'm, oh, I'm an artist it's oh it's great this and then you look at it afterwards and oh I didn't draw that very well did I it was a bit didn't uh, I can, I need to go in, in and correct that now that's good Now all of these, all of these, di the directions of all these brush strokes are, uh, they can be used to describe things just as much as marks, like just like in a face. Um, the direction of these can flow along with the line of the furniture if I decide that that is. That's appropriate. There are sort of lines up here where where the primer, priming acrylic has um, just sort of randomly gone over the paint. But I did choose I, when I I had a few of these boards, and there was one that was the the primer had moved in that direction, and that was a bit more appropriate because this is a landscape picture. Um, which, just in case if if you don't know, it's um, the longer the long the longer side is on the bottom. Um, there it's, it's really 
mess around and feeling my way up around it, I think. Uh, I wonder whether to put any any of that dark on, on the right hand side. Um, I'm going to dare to move the phone up and I'm sorry if it um, twists again but I would like you to see the whole of the whole of the image. I think it, it has a problem when it flops down this way. Oop, yes, it's done that again. Just, just, just with my little tripod. No, that is looking like there's a bit of shine on the right, right hand corner. Um, oop. I'm not sure what happens when you can see that, but it, it sort of, for me, it says, please rotate your phone. Um, now, that's, uh, that's the state of the paints there. Um, now, I'll leave the camera up there, I think, and then we won't see a whole lot. Slipping down, I'm afraid. Um, well, the best thing to do, I think, would be to take this off and then actually hold it while I paint. Yeah, it's just uh, it's for the last ten minutes. I think going around checking the Checking these textures. Oops. Move the light up slightly. Trying to blend that in a bit there. It's a kind of wash. Thin, thin wash I've got on the brush there. I'm, I'm quite. I I like that at that stage, but um, it's um, from from experience, this will probably be about another five hours of just me fiddling about with the with the closest areas of the faces, and I'm not sure that that is going to be. Um, Possible with this setup because I really need to I, I need to be sort of in, in and out as far as my body position is concerned um, So I will I will will leave it will leave the demonstrations for this painting um, and I Will I will show you it in the in the next video but I will start a new start a new painting in the next video or be uh, I'll be painting a different painting um, so I'll just sort of I'll we can we can sort of examine what we've got uh, while whilst on the video um, let's give you a better look I've got the phone sort of mounted on the Stick. It's um, it's chunks like that that I really want to. They they resemble movement as far as I'm concerned, and I. I like to have those next door to 
highly contrasting marks. So that's a, that's the sort of pencil equivalent of a uh, paint equivalent rather of a of the the cross hatching from earlier. Sort of harder. I mean, it's creating shadows physically on the on the painting, so it can act as lines. And that will be. Yes, it's been it's been very difficult actually to to be looking at this picture over the between my um, demonstrations because this is the fourth one if I'm counting right. Um, and not doing any any work on it um, because I just wanted to get in with the get in with the face, um, but uh, no, that's a that's a good place to leave it. And I will um, yes, I'll, I will see you at some point next week. I will um, it most probably be on Wednesday or Thursday, but I'm not definitely sure. Um, but I will put it on so that you can see it as an event again. But thank you very much for watching, and um, I will see you next time.